Hey, do you find choosing drywall finishing and mudding tools confusing? Does it make your head spin a bit? Well, I've got a solution for you. I've got a way to clarify all that and make it a lot easier for you. And I'm going to explain that right after this. Hey, welcome back to my channel here at That Kilt -A Guy Videos. And if you'd like to learn how to do your own home improvement projects like drywall repairs and so on, or if you like testing videos and helpful videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our channel by clicking that uh, subscribe button down there like you see flashing here. I like to flash it there. And click that bell icon if you want to get notified each time we put out a new video. It's my goal here to teach you guys how to do this stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do it right well hey in today's video i decided to do this video because one of the most common things i see out there is is confusion over what kind of tools and supplies that you guys need and understanding all the different muds the different masking materials the different types of tools sanders all this so i i thought about it well a while back i put out a video and i kind of described all of these tools i went through it and just showed each one but you know in a video it's actually not as helpful because let's just say you decide you're going to tackle a project and you don't have a wide knife you're going to go buy a wide knife but you're not sure what to buy because that tool rack's got so many choices what's right what's wrong can you get by with something cheaper do you need the more expensive stuff do you need stainless steel do you need blue steel so many questions and i know it's confusing to you so if you decide to go watch a video you might have to scroll through 15 minutes of it to find that one section and maybe that person talks about it the way you want and tells you what you want so i decided to put together an ebook for you now what i'm going to do is after this little brief introduction i'm going to describe my ebook and show you what kind of information we're putting in there because i think this will be really helpful for you careful i might shave myself put that down <laughs> I think the ebook will be a lot easier because it's going to have chapters and everything you're going to better click on it and let's say you do want to know about the wide knives all you got to do is go to that chapter click on it you'll go right to it you'll read about it and so first I'm going to show you all about the ebook then I'm going to come back and I'm going to explain some of these tools just a little bit and then I'm going to show you what would be a basic set of tools that you would want if you're just going to do around the house simple drywall repairs in the book I'll show you both the simple set of tools and a slightly advanced set of tools and a more advanced set of tools so that you can save some money by not buying tools you don't need and by not buying gimmicks because honestly there is a lot of gimmicks in the world of drywall i've actually fell for some of them so i'm going to steer you guys away from that save you money save you headache and th some of those gimmicks will give you a poor quality job too so i'm going to turn it over to my partner here guy well that's me actually but i'll be on a microphone now and then i'll be right back all right now what i'm going to do is talk to you about the actual book Okay, this is actually going to be a professional style book, although it's going to be an ebook. And I actually do have experience in this. In 2006, I wrote this book here called Do It Yourself Guide to Biodiesel. I first self published it, and a publisher picked me up and decided to publish it. Well, that led into me building the equipment, and we built small systems like this one for schools. I installed this one you see here in the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry on a TV show called Garage Mahal. And I've shipped them overseas and we even built this great big one here on site. So the point is that in the process of doing that, I not only had to write the original book, I had to write a lot of different guides and a lot like that. So I'm pretty familiar with putting together books like this. So I'm going to try and make this as helpful to you guys as I can because I know how confusing it is to try and figure out the drywall tools you need and the materials. I mean, when you're picking out things like materials, for example, there's so many choices like plus three ultra lightweight the green label all-purpose big buckets little buckets there's topping mud there's five minute mud 45 minute mud 90 minute mud there's so many choices I know it gets confusing 
And that's why I decided to put this book together for you to help you out with that. So here are some examples of what's in the book. Here's the preliminary table of contents. Now, there's going to be about twice as many pages at least, so ignore the number there. But you'll see it's all going to be organized by sections and that. So you'll see sections like terminology, and this is all in alphabetical order. And then I'm going to have a whole list in a table format of tools. I'll go through and show you a picture. I'll describe what the tool's about and what it's used for and so on. And I'm also going to discuss things like tool quality, what to look for, materials, and so on. Then I'm going to put together these lists where I'm going to give you a choice of, of economy, mid-grade, and best. And I'm going to explain what makes each of those fall into that category and when you can get by with economy or when you shouldn't ever use the economy and so on. So it's going to really help you save money, pick out some good tools and get the job done right. Because remember, we like to do it right. Oh, and all the images in this guide will be clickable. So you can just click on them and go right to the tool in the Amazon store. That way you won't have to go search for it manually. But all this is just some of what's going to be in the guide like I'm going to explain the differences in knife shapes. I'm also going to do the same thing with all the materials. I'll cover it just as thoroughly. Anyway, that describes the book. Let's get back to the rest of the video. All right, I hope that helped you out. Now, we're not done yet, so don't take off. Because what I'm going to do here is go through these briefly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Now, knives can really get confusing, honestly. I, this is just a tip of my iceberg. I probably own 30 different mud knives and that would just be the metal ones, not including all the plastic ones. I'm gonna tell you this because of my experience of doing this. I've made, like I say, I've done this for over 30 years. I started 50 years ago when I was eight years old helping my dad. So I've got a lot of experience. I've made a lot of mistakes buying stuff that just wasn't that good a knife in the book. But also there's differences in things like handle, uh, design. Like for example, look at this one. Let's compare two different knives. This one's got a straight handle. This one's got a curved handle. That's considered an ergonomic shape. Do you need that? I'm gonna tell you that in the book. This is considered a hammer end. If it's got a metal end on it, you can actually use it to finish setting a nail, sometimes a screw, or just a dimple on the paper. They're really handy. Do you need that? Well, again, I'm gonna explain that. Some of these tools don't have that. Notice these two knives right here. This is the rib. You notice the difference. So I'm gonna talk about the differences in the ribs and what that kind of, what, how that affects the tool and what you should look for. Uh, some specialty tools. Do you need one of these for doing inside corners? Like I said, I have quite a few plastic knives. There are some advantages to it, and I'll point that out in the book too. Now let's go to this subject of mud mixers. How do you mix up the mud? Do you need to mix up the mud? You need to mix it. It's so much better. It just works better. So mixers can come in all kinds of varieties. For example, does that look like an egg beater? That's because it is, but it works great for hot mud. I'm gonna try and point that out in the book. I've got three types of mixers hanging up here and I see they're out of view, so there's this type. Then we got this two-bladed type. And then in the book, I'm gonna introduce you to this new style. And do you need this one? If you want the best mixer, you need this one. Okay, let's go on to just say, for example, sanders. You can sand all kinds of ways. You got sponge sanders, you've got hand sanders, triangle sanders. But if you're gonna do anything big at all, you need a pad sander. This one's Velcro. This one clamps on by the ends. And then we have this new round style. I'm gonna explain all the differences between them and which one I'll recommend based upon the skill level of what you're trying to do. Another way to sand, you got sponge sanders with a green scrubber on one side. You got the sponge sander with the little white scrubber on the one side. You got the sponge sander with the white scrubber and the green in the middle. Why does it have a green label? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess it looks cool. 
I've never figured that out what that's supposed to accomplish, but I'm going to point all those things out. Textures. Well, if you're going to do a repair, you probably need to do some texture. Is can texture any good? I'll tell you which ones I would recommend, what I'd recommend them for, and I'll show you the better option when you're doing anything bigger than about four square feet. Now, the other option to a pan and a knife, and you've probably heard this if you watch many videos at all, is a hawk and a trowel. I can use it, but it's just not my favorite. The reason I had a knife, a six inch knife in my hand when I was eight years old, that's when my dad put me on a pair of stilts and told me to spot the nails that were this tall and I couldn't reach them. So I literally grew up with a pan and a knife in my hand. So that's just what feels good to me. Now, if you like the idea of a hawk and a trowel, go for it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, be sure and don't forget to subscribe. And if you wanna see future videos and know when they come out, click on that bell icon then there's uh, joint tapes uh, the common mesh tape and I'm gonna show you this cool tool <laughs> blooper time huh and then I'm gonna show you this cool tool this is actually just a mesh tape dispenser it's really nothing fancy at all so this thing is actually cool I use it a lot I have two of them the reason is because you can do this and put things up quickly it's got a little razor that comes out right there and cuts it so I'll explain that I'll put that in the ebook then there's paper tape fiber fuse then you got things like let's say you want to tape a 45 degree angle an outside corner if you want to do an outside corner like a 45 corner B doesn't like to bend to a 45 but there's this stuff that's pre-creased it's flexible but it's very sturdy you can bend that and do whatever angle you need i'm going to show you that it's much tougher i just tried to tear this i haven't ever tried that but i just tried and it was like it's tough stuff i don't i think i'd have to really yeah i can't tear it so this is really tough stuff so you might need that I'm also going to talk about some specialty tools. Like for example, do you know what this is? Well, I'll show you in the book. How about this one? This is really good for bullnose too. Now these, I'm gonna recommend plastic knives because you notice these two shapes. If you're ever doing off angled ceilings, say a cathedral ceiling that has a vaulted peak like this, and you decide you wanna round it and not make it perfectly straight, well, you need various angles and you can okay if you're really new to this you're a novice haven't done much mudding at all i'm going to show you what i recommend for you and again i'm going to cover this kind of stuff in the book what i'd recommend for a really simple setup is a mud pan and you can actually get by with plastic i don't have one to show you if you're just doing this a little bit but there are disadvantages now so you need a mud pan, get you a six inch knife. And it's got to have the right shape. I explain that too. And then, a, and then a 10 inch knife would be a good one. And then you need something to sand with. I'm going to, in my videos, I'm going to teach you how to not have to sand very much. The secret is how you put it on. A lot of videos, they just slap it on heavy and then try and sand it smooth. And you don't need to do that. See that little eye popping up right there? If you click on that you'll see one of my videos where I explain how to put it on smooth and not need to sand very much at all. There'll also be some that pop up right at the end of this video. But if you're going to do anything like joint finishing, bigger repairs, don't try and sand a big repair with a sanding sponge. You just can't get it level. You might smooth it out but you're going to smooth it out like this. Sand it with this. It's flat. It's going to flatten it as you sand it. It's going to take all that waviness out of it. Then use the sanding sponge around your edges. If you look in the description down below, I'll put a link to how you can get information on that ebook and I've got a special offer for you down there. So check that out. And as always, hey, I appreciate you guys so much for stopping by, checking out my videos and giving us that thumbs up. And I'll certainly see you on the next video. So take care can work on inside corners too but if you want to do that corner bead comes in Ow. I knew I couldn't tear that